I'll be sharing a fun shutter fold card technique with you tonight, and it's sure to wow you, and it's simpler than you might think. I will show you how to make a Christmas card using the shutter fold card technique and the Snowflake Wishes stamp set. You can find that stamp set in the current annual catalog. We'll be making our own designer series paper using an old embossing technique, and we'll also be using a sentiment found in the classic cloche stamp set for the inside the card. Hi, I'm Joan Heberlein, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I created this video for Joan's Simple Paper Crafts found right here on YouTube. If you're new here, I want to thank you for stopping by. And if you're a returning guest, welcome back. Be sure to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below. That way you won't miss when I post a video, which is typically once a week. Now give me a second to turn the camera down so we can get started. Here's the card we're going to make. And I made it in magenta madness because I really like that color. We're going to use the Snowflake Wishes stamp set. And we're also going to use the classic Kulsh for the sentiment. And it's inside sentiment, we needed that. We'll get started. We'll take a five and a half by eight and a half sheet of basic thick cardstock. And I'm using the thick cardstock so that the inside will hold up here. This needed to be thick, and I made the outside thick as well. We want this scored at two and an eighth and six and three eighths. So I've got that done already. And what I did is I scored it at two and an eighth, and I just turned it around and did two and an eighth again. And that makes it so that it meets in the center. And then next I'd like to do is all our die cutting. So we've got our three by five and a quarter inch piece. That's this piece here. We need to die cut this out of there. And then we also need to die cut the three and a quarter by three and a quarter square with the snowflake. So we'll just do that. And I can do them both at the same time. And I just center this on here as best as I can. And I'll run it through the die cutting machine. And I've already done that. So we've got our two pieces already cut out. And I ran it through twice. So I ran it through once and then just backed it up. And I'm just going to make sure that all of the, the pieces are cut out. And it looks like it came pretty clean. So there was just one little circle there. And this one looks good too. So we'll just set them aside. And then next we want to do is stamp our pieces. And we've got two pieces that we need to stamp. We need to stamp this piece here with the inside sentiment and then this piece with the outside sentiment. So first I'm going to cut this, put the flags in it with our banners pick-a-punch. And what I do is there's six cuts we could make here. Three on this one and three on this one. And we're going to do this one here with the one inch cardstock. And I'm pushing it in all the way and I'm turning it over so I can see that it's it meets all the way up to the top. And then I'm just gonna punch it. And then we're gonna do it on the other side. Do the same thing, push it in all the way, make sure it's even, and then we're gonna punch again. And that's done. So we're done with this. And this is the banners pick a punch. And next we'll do is stamp these. And we're going to use our stays on ink. And I'm going to put some paper down just in case I happen to go off and I don't want it to get our surface all messy. So we're going to use the inside sentiment is the magic of Christmas never ends. And since I'm doing the inside sentiment, I better have that 
piece here. And I'm trying to center it as best as I can, right to left. And then I'm just going to off-center it top-wise. So it's going to be more to the top than it is to the bottom. And I'm going to set that aside so it can dry. And then we'll do the next one. Just seeing if one side's better than the other. So we'll, we'll do this side. And I'm using the Stays On ink to give a more vibrant stamp. And I need to use Stays On ink remover when we're done. That worked really well. And I'm just going to put this away. I think we're done with that. And now let's use our ink remover. So it just stays on cleaner. And I will put some honest ink. And down here as well. And then I'm not going to use my stamp and scrub because of, of the stays on ink. It behaves differently than the other ink. So I'm just going to use this chamois here and take this off. We're done with that. Next, we want to glue this down in the center of this card, but let me first burnish these score lines. I'm going to do it on both sides. So we're going to use some glue and it's going to be the multi-purpose glue. You can find that in the catalog. And then I want to cent center this on this card. And I'm just using my bone folder to get rid of all the air bubbles between in the glue. So we get contact paper on paper. Next we're going to take our die cut, this one right here, and we're going to fashion that down with dimensionals. And we're going to use the mini dimensionals. If you don't have mini dimensionals, you can use the large ones and just cut them in half, like right down here and then use them on there. So I'm going to just put four dimensionals along the top and the bottom of this card. And we need to get it as close to the top as we can because there's not a whole lot of room for the shutter to work. So we want to make sure that we're not putting it into the area where the shutter function is going to be. And then we'll do the same thing down here. I wanted the flat edge going along parallel with the top part. part. Let me just see how that works. I think that works fine. So let's go ahead and take off the paper backings and then we'll stick it on down. And I'm using our take your pick tool to 
pick off these backings real easily. And I use it a lot for leveling things too. So when I when I go and, and I'm working on another strip on this card, you'll see how I'm using it. And I just want to make sure we've got that going level. And I don't have it up high enough, so I didn't put it down really hard because I didn't I knew that I was needed to make sure that it was up high enough. All right, so this is the next piece where, where we want to have these be our shutters and they go underneath. And so we need to fold these back to make the hinge for the shutter. And I'll fold these all in the score line and I'm gonna give them a nice crisp burnish. I'm going to put tear and tape on here and we're going to close this and that'll pull it open. When you pull it open, it opens the shutter. And do the same thing on this side. I am going to put tear and tape on those edges first before we do anything else. And I don't use my fingers to tear it because I have arthritis and I, I can't grip the paper that easily and tear it. So it's just as easy for me to grab a scissors and snip it off. So let's get these back in here. So I'm going to slip them underneath. And the same thing on this side. And I want it to be as close as possible to the edge. And let's just take the paper backing off. And then we'll close this up. And there's your shutter action. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. And I want it as close as possible to the edge. And here's where I'm using my take your pick tool to help move it around. And then I'm just going to take off the paper backing and hold it in place. And it moved on me. So let's see if I can't move it back. Got the inside working fine. So next we need to do is our snowflake. We will put liquid glue on this as well. Let me get my silicone mat. And we want to center that on the card stop. I must have miscalculated when I cut this out, so let me just get it centered down the bottom. And then we'll just trim that off. And I will use our trimmer for that. I like our trimmer. It's a right-handed or a left-handed trimmer and it has the cutting blade on there and it has the scoring blade too. So this is the scoring blade and this is your cutting blade. And I'm just looking to see where that's going to be cutting it. Hmm, do a very good job there. It'll be fine though. 
All right, so we've got that done. And next we want to do is we want to emboss our pieces of paper using Wintry 3D Embossing Folder. This orange embossing folder is not a Stampin' Up! folder. But I'm using it. And you just want to put it in here. And have it straight. And then you close it and you run it through this way. So this is, goes into the machine pointing this way. And I've already done it. So I've got two already embossed. And then next what you want to do is you want to take our ink, the Magenta Madness, and a dauber, and go over the snowflakes to help them raise up. And I'm going to go on the paper first so that I know how much ink is on there. And I am going beyond the snowflake. So there's some shading, but the snowflake portions, the raised portions are darker than the background. So we're going to have different levels of magenta madness on this piece when we're all done. So there we have our two pieces. Now, what you could, could have done is you could have inked the embossing folder and it would have given you a whole different look. But I wanted this look here, so that's why I did it that way. So next we will glue these down to our Magenta Madness panel pieces. And I'm using the liquid glue so that I can adjust it as needed to make sure that it's centered onto these panels. Because the stamp and seal and seal plus likes to grip pretty quickly where it takes a while for the glue to set up. And you've got wiggle room until that happens. So I am going to use the bone folder on the back side because I don't want to crush the edges of the cardstock. And I just had a burr there, so I'm just kind of taking it with a fingernail file. Just sanded it off real quickly. Very little pressure on it. So I'm going to center this one again. I like those panels. Those turned out pretty good, I think. And then we're going to glue those onto the card base. Start in the middle, so if it comes out too strong, then I can... And then I can adjust it one way or the other. So I want to center this on the card base. And then we'll 
use a bone folder on the inside. We'll do this next side. Okay, that worked. Then we will attach this by putting dimensionals on the left side so that we can still open it. And I'm going to just put six on here and make sure that they run parallel to the center line. So cut the this edge here needs to be flat and running parallel with the center line. And then we'll just use our take your pick tool to pull off the backings again. See how they wrangle them up onto that pick? And then I can just throw them all away. And now we want to center this on the card. So I'm having the center portion right here going down up in here to here. And then I'm just going to open this up. And next we will do our snowflake wishes. And I'm just going to put this on with glue rather than dimensionals because I don't want to add any more height to the card. And I think we'll be done with this, so let me cap that off. And we're going to just center this on the card. There we, there we have it. Let's bring in our other cards. So here's the cards that we've done tonight. This was the first one that I did off camera. And this was the second one I did off camera. And this is the one we did on camera. And I wanted to show you that Snowflakes don't have to be white. You can make them any color. I hope you like this project as much as I did. Why don't you give it a try? Now, if you enjoyed today's video, would you do me two favors? Click the thumbs up emoji. That means you like it. And would you share it on social media with your crafting friends and pin it to Pinterest? These actions will help to keep sharing my ideas with other crafters for free. And I'd really appreciate that. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss any future videos. If you have any questions, be sure to contact me. I'm here to help in any way that I can. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Just reach out to me. If you'd like to place a Stampin' Up! order or would like a catalog, hop over to my website where you'll find the Shop Now button. To shop with me, you'll need to go to Joan Heberline dot stampin up dot net bear with me a little bit longer because i want to let you know of the promotions going on right now our next promotion is the last chance products sale the july december 2021 mini catalog will be retiring soon it's all bittersweet to see a classic stampin up catalog take a trip to the retirement but we're looking forward to all the new products on their way and we hope you are too. Stock up on your favorite products before they're gone for good. Save up to 50% on essential craft supplies. What are you waiting for? Start shopping. After all, this selection of last chance products 
is only available while supplies last. The sale starts December 1st at 12 a.m. Mountain Time and ends January 3rd at 11.50 p.m. Mountain Time. Check the comments section below for a list of retiring items and the carryover items. Before we go, I want to tell you about Stampin' Up's new product. It's an early release and it's called Eden's Garden. And it's a collection which contains a bundle and some designer series paper and some gems. You can buy the bundle or you can buy the individual items. And the sale starts October 1st. Mark your calendars. I'll be back next Wednesday, December 15th at 7 p.m. Central Time. We'll be doing something from the new catalog that's coming out in January. I hope you'll be here to join me. Thanks so much for being here with me tonight. And I look forward to next time. Bye for now, and don't forget to subscribe.